If you're having problems painting purity seals and tabards, this tutorial is for you. I can bits. What's up Hobby Maniacs? I'm Rob Bear. And today we're going to give you some tips and tricks on how to paint tabards and purity seals. Well, actually just tabards, but you can use the same thing to paint purity seals. It's literally the same. <laughs> on your miniatures, today we'll be using Mr. Dragon Cat himself, Vanis Hammerhands, straight out of the Mortal Realms, out of Age of Sigmar. Now you will notice here that there is a large tabard streamer, as well as a couple of purity seal-esque streamers about his person and his gold armor there so this is going to be another tutorial on this fantastic miniature that combines all sorts of styles of metalwork dragon skin we've got red capes some dry brush action with blue and now tabards and how to paint them going forward so check it out we're going to jump right into it and show you how to paint tabards and purity seals. So here is our Vanis Hammerhands, of course, Mr. Dragon Cat himself. And you can see we've got some banners to go ahead and fill in here. There's three different ones, one on the back side right here too. And this is just going to be that tabard mix that is super easy to do, tabard or banner mix. The very first part of this one is going to be your Zandri Dust from Games Workshop. It's a uh, great, very good base color for bringing out uh, things like purity seals. Of course, these banners, any sort of tabard any sort of i guess like really accessory out there it's great for starting out leather or doing the in between uh groin robes and things or the insides of capes as well so we're going to base coat and we're going to grab our citadel artificer brush right here that's uh, been cleaned off and this is a really great way to go in here and just start applying a very thin coat of this first color here over this uh crazy gold and we're just going to go through and carefully base coat all of the tabard bits before we move on to the next step which is going to be a nice little custom wash that i've developed uh, that i think does really well for a lot of these banner and purity kind of seal situations here so we'll finish that base coat up and be right back all right so now that our base coat is all dry all the way through on all three of the banners you can see right there on the back we want to get in there and bring out all that sigma rights or sig uh stormcast writing i don't know what they call it but all that stuff on the banner we need to pull out because that's actually features and detail work on the banner so we're going to grab our purity seal tech which is one part devil and mud one part null oil and three parts sepia with um it's just straight wash so we're gonna need to thin this down just a little bit with some uh future floor wax mix which i like to do here now this is going to be let's see we're gonna put some of this in here we don't need a whole lot because it is that's probably enough right there and then we're gonna come in with a 50 50 mix of future floor wax or pledge with future in water. So we got a, we got a bit of it right there. And we're gonna kind of splash the pot here. And just give it enough, I think, to let it flow. We're not gonna make it translucent like a glaze or anything, but we're just trying to give it a little bit of viscosity to work with. Then we're gonna grab a little chisel brush here, kind of mix it up, get a feel for what we're working with right there. Let's grab another bottle bottle cap palette. You can kind of see it's not 100% translucent, but it's starting to get there. So I think that's going to give us a good flow. We'll get down here one of the big fat parts, kind of see how see how we're looking. You always want to make sure you're dabbing your brush off on something here. You don't want to get all the glip glops onto your to your model. So we're just going to give it a nice broad stroke across here. And you can see it's getting right in there, getting in the cracks already. That's very cool. That's what we wanted. 
getting around the back here and this is a hundred percent what I was looking for here nice smooth transitions getting all the way across the flats of the banner and if we go up here it'll probably do the same thing we just want to be a little careful when we get over here to this metal that's the big thing and that's why I like to use this chisel tip right here is because you can work your angles a little bit better you just kind of hold it there by the uh hammer you can work your angles a little bit better with the chisel so to speak so you're not getting it kind of everywhere so we're going to get in here and get a little bit more wash right into here make sure we get a nice good splash of detail and pull it back across the top here and we're just going to continue on but periodically we're going to make sure that we're dabbing enough off our brush there on the bottom and just kind of going in and looking for any clip clops things like that right there that we're not going to want but we are gonna eventually come back and highlight all of these folds. So it's not gonna be that big of a deal um, where the stuff is right now. So I think that's a nice solid transition right there that I am super happy with. And we're just gonna continue on and come on back and show you what we're working with as we start to highlight it up from here. So now that our wash is all dry, you can see it has got down in all those cracks. There's great definition through and through between all of the cracks on the side and the actual writing itself. Now I did have to go back here and put in a little, uh, I would say a little bit of wash directly into there in another thin coat after the first coat dried, but don't be afraid to go in there and get a little bit more coverage if you want it. It's no big deal, really. So now we've got all that, and it looks great where it, where it is at right now, but compared to the rest of the model, it is as well detailed, so we're gonna have to keep going. If we wanted, if the rest of the model was at like a tabletop kind of level, this would be fine, but we're just gonna go back in with our uh, base color of Zamzi and just block out uh, some more of the surface area here. Now, of course, this was a mix of Future Fluorowax and the wash itself. So it is going to start to be glossy right now, which you can see it kind of shining in uh, the light right there, which is, you know, to be expected. It's literally uh, Fluorowax. So we're just going to get in here and we're just going to kind of cut back and hit some spots, hit some of the highlight highlighted areas here and just set up for some really tight edge highlights with a brighter color, which will probably be this mixed with a little Minoth white uh, base that we love for all that bone work and everything we featured here on the channel before. So just gonna start going through, blocking out all the areas, trying to stay out of those cracks, uh, you know, not messing up all that definition that we had just created with our wash. So we're gonna keep at it here, slowly and methodically, blocking in around the letters and blocking in the edges, but leaving lots of areas still untouched for our next highlight right there. And so you can easily compare between the two and it's already starting to look a hundred times better. Okay, so about halfway through here, you can definitely see the definition now between the banner on the right and the banner on the left there with Heldenhammer, of course, or, you know, the, Sig the Gal Mirage symbol, whatever, whatever that Sigma right hammer symbol is on the left, it has not been base coated and the one on the right has. So it definitely gives you an idea of what we're working with. We're going to keep on pressing through and then come on back and highlight this bad boy. And there it is. Boom goes the dynamite. Look at that fantastic contrast between the depths here that we just did that purity tech mix into and then we just went in and base coated back over all the flat parts now next step which will probably be the last step well maybe without a little bit glaze is coming in here and hyper highlighting all the edges with minoth white base i'm sure there is a gw equivalent um, not 100% up, maybe like Pallid Witch Flesh or something. Feel free to leave your personal suggestions in the comments below. I'm not super up on G-Dub's new paint line. Um, I have to kind of, you know, be a little aware of all the paint lines out there. And for me, I've just been working with this for my bone details for so many years. I can tell, hey, this is going to be a great, you know, highlight color here. So I'm just going to the old standby. So we're just going to hyper highlight all these edges. Uh, real quick, it's very simple. I love I love these bottles too because I'm just gonna shake this up. I'm literally just gonna flip up the pot. It doesn't uh, it doesn't kind of fold down like G Dubs do, right? 
and I'm good to go. I, I'm not going to take any out on my palate. So we're just going to grab, do a little of this just to give you a taste of what we're going to be doing in here. Because I know when I say hyper highlight and hit up all the edges, that can mean a number of things, right? So we're literally going to take our paintbrush here and make sure we get enough of the paint off. So, yep, there we go. We got enough of the paint off. You can see right there, right? And we're just going to come in here and we're going to hit the edge, which you can clearly see right there, in a perpendicular manner. Very easy stuff here. And if we, all of our paint, well, it's still a little heavy on paint, but I can still kind of control it. We're just going to go through and hit this very edge. It's not even like we're painting. We're just dragging the edge along here perpendicular. And there it is. You can see it's amazing contrast right off the bat. And we're just going to continue through hitting all of these edges perpendicularly until the paint runs out on the brush, which is about right now. So we'll reset the brush, rinse it out, reset it. This little crack here is kind of annoying. Uh, reset the brush and then just keep on powering through and we'll probably hit some of these depths uh, of these of the shade inside of maybe one of the edges of all the writing, just so it gives a, a little bit more of the depth, but we're not gonna hit both edges there because it just won't look right. Now for some of these crazy parts that you can't get in there and, and uh, completely perpendicular edge highlight, you're just gonna have to get down in here and do it the old fashioned way, which is a straight line work. So we're just gonna get in here and go across uh, that little um, notch right there and it's very helpful if you pull uh, when you're painting if you pull towards you so that's all we're gonna do here and I, I apologize for the camera angle I just wanted you to understand a technique that pulling towards you gives you a lot more control over what you're doing whether or not and we're gonna have to finger race that one a little bit got a little fat with it but that's okay you get the idea there and what's really neat about this is, uh, well, another lesson learned. <laughs> Sometimes doing this stuff on camera brings up a couple of extra points. So I kept a little bit of my Zandri dust here handy in case we had a little accident like that. Now I didn't go quite, it's not my bad, but I didn't go quite as thin as I wanted to. So I'm gonna set my brush here, I'm gonna twirl my tip and I'm gonna come in here with a little bit of that Zandri and what we're gonna to try to do is, while it's still a little bit wet, we're just gonna do the same thing and pull the Zandri towards us, thus shading it. We'll have to get that little edge right there, but you can see kind of what happened. We shaded it back, kind of fixed a little bit of the issue there when we went a little too fat with that main uh, very thin coat of mean off and now we're going to come in with that mean off again and that's why i like i, I really uh, like working with wet paint because if we have an issue and i was holding my breath there almost like i was firing a gun uh, if we have an issue we can just come in there with our fingertip eraser and kind of uh wipe it out with a little bit of um you know saliva on our finger there so you can kind of see we're starting to block it all in we're going to get some of those individual letters that we already did on the hammer but we didn't follow it all the way through to keep that illusion of depth right there so we're just going to keep working through and then flip on over to the back there it is all finished up our mean off white base we hit all the hyper edges got in there and did a lot of lettering the tops and the sides of some of it just to give it that really sweet contrast. So this really pulled together Mr. Hammer Hands himself. Now the last thing to do, of course this is probably one of the last tutorials in the series on Vanis Hammer Hands. We did the gold, we did the red cape, well actually we did it on Ixion Hail. I don't think we did the blue, but we definitely did a lot of the work on Mr. Dragon Cat here, of course, the skin, uh, doing the basing and everything like that. So a lot of the work's been done. So now we just got to attach it here and show you the finished product. And stick a fork in him. He is done. We've glued him down, got them all attached, went in, made sure all the tabards are looking fresh. And the rest of the model is all glued down as well now. 
We even did a couple of detail, like make some crazy fiery detail up here on the eyes. With a little bit of red worked up with some blood letter glaze. So it looks a little spooky, kind of lizardy effect going on right there. Because remember, this guy spits hot fire. He is literally a dragon. Don't let the cat part fool you. He is a dragon, first and foremost, when it comes to attacking the enemies of Sigmar right there. So this has been a super fun project. Of course, we got all sorts of tutorials from the gold to the red to the dragon skin itself. Even this particular base right here, this kind of ash waste base, it's all here on the channel. Now we may come back and touch this up, maybe do a little bit of blue glow up there in a separate tutorial. I'm kind of itching to try out a little bit of glow because he is the Lord Celestine, of course, so he's got to he's got to look the best, you know, he's got can't be no buster. Now, we did a lot of detail work. So there's one last step and we're going to put him aside because like I said, he is done. Our last step is to clean our brushes. Of course, you've probably seen the stuff, the master's brush cleaner. Great stuff here. So all of our brushes that we use today, we're just going to get a little bit of lather, a little bit of water on them and then work them through this. Get a little bit of this brush soap on it. Oop, a little bit more water here. And what this does, this is gonna condition it. It's gonna also clean it and protect it. And just kind of work some of that lather through, going one in one direction down the bristle like this. So we're not jamming up and messing up the hairs itself. Getting a nice, good lather there. Working all that soap through to condition it, rinsing it off. And we're good to go. We're going to do that with all of our brushes here. Like I said, it's very, very super easy to do. This stuff sells for like 10 bucks on Amazon. I'm sure you can get it at Hobby Lobby, etc. Things like that. But it's really going to extend the life of your brushes. Of course, you know, people like that are commissioned painters and things might, uh, you know, might not notice a difference. They'll only get an extra couple of months out of their stuff. But for people that are rather casual about it, you might see your brushes actually last for years, if not longer, properly conditioning your brushes like that. So that is it. The project is over. We've cleaned our brushes. We've done our due diligence. We've got all of our hobby fundamentals taken care of, including uh, the base, the detail work, the freehand, everything we had to do has been accomplished here so that's it for this one folks it was a very exciting project i uh, thank you so much for checking out these videos now of course if you like our features here on youtube make sure you subscribe to us and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and thumbs up our videos here and head on over to the longwar.net that's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content early access video and more become a veteran of the long war today